So today we've got uh, Chris Ortega, who's the finance lead of the US for Emarsys. He's a uh, BI and AI uh, evangelist. Uh, if you've uh, watched anything to do with finance on, on YouTube and in different channels and blogs in North America, I'm sure you've come across him. Um, so welcome, welcome today, Chris. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. So where we're gonna to start today is the evolution of FP&A, past, present, and future. Um, Chris, so before we get into the crux of this, I think a really interesting place to start is, you know, exactly what's your definition of FP&A? I know it's, it's, a, it's a term that's been around quite a lot in North America and also in Europe, but other people may not be so familiar with it. What do you consider FP&A? Yeah, so uh, great question. I think FP&A is twofold. Uh, when you look at the, the definition of it, financial planning and analysis, right? Uh, that's your traditional kind of methodology and what people think about what FP&A means to the business. But also look at it from another perspective. I look at it as a financial, partner, financial partnership and advising. I think that's the secondary element is when you look at FP&A and, and what it means for organizations, it's not only knowing the numbers and leveraging the technologies, but it's also partnering inside the business. So I look at it from a partnership and an advising perspective, as well as a planning and analysis perspective. So for me, that's really what FP&A means and really uh, the, the, the turning point and catalyst of, of how it's really evolved for not only small, medium, large enterprise organizations, but uh, that's what FP&A means to me. And that's what in North America and even across the globe, I think you're really starting to see those uh, that definition of it be the evolution of what, what FP&A means inside of a business. Wonderful. No, that's a great explanation. Um, so in terms of kind of the, the role of people, the processes, the technology that has played a part in FP&A, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So when you look at the past, present, and future in FP&A, right, typically when you've looked at our profession from an accounting and finance perspective, we have been looked at and viewed in the organization as the scorekeepers. Right. We're the one that says, hey, we're going to do six widgets and we did four widgets. So for us, it has been uh, that piece of looking at us as a functional area in scorekeeping. Now, when you look at the evolution and what technology and this partnership element and leveraging tools and processes, uh, this has really dro drove our profession to be looked at as valued integrators inside the business, valued advisors. So. Uh, that transition has really defined um, what FP&A means to teams. And I think it really distills down to three key elements, people, processes, and technology. Those are really three of the monumental uh, pillars that are really driving what FP&A means in organizations now. So when you look at it traditionally, right, scorekeeping and the kind of uh, budget police we were looked at, we're branching outside of the organization. And that's really driving a lot of efficiencies. That's also driving a lot of friction in the business. And I think, like I said, those three elements around people, process, and technologies, those things are here. Uh, your people are changing. When you look at the demographics that we're looking at for uh, 2025, there's millennials are going to make up 75% of the workforce. So you're seeing a shift in the people side. Processes are getting so much more efficient. And technology has be, became FP&A's right-hand person when it comes to being efficient and resource uh, optimized inside of their businesses. So that's kind of how I look at it and, and distill those three pillars down and what they relate to FP&A. Wonderful. And you touched on a great point there. So what, what is your vision in the next five to 10 years in terms of the FP&A function? So my vision in the next five to 10 years for FP&A is uh, I think we're continue leverage technologies. Um, technology is uh, when you look at us as a as traditionally as a cost producing unit, not a revenue producing unit. Um, and when you look at business overall, right, I think most businesses, whether you're small, medium, large, enterprise or what, you're strapped for resources. So making sure that you're doing the most with the resources that you have, having your people focused on high value activities, gone are the days of those Excel aggregation and what I call turning and burning through Excel. Uh, that's where you have technology, right? And I think the evolution is really around processes driving data information data to information information to knowledge knowledge to ultimate decision making so uh, when i look at it you when i look at fpna in the next five years where's fpna going to sit right when you look at it as a function i think it's going to sit somewhere between the cfo and coo route now why do i say that 
when you look at FPNA traditionally, right, we're the number people. We know all the numbers. We know the budgets. We know the, the forecast. We're leading the forecast elements. So a lot of that business acumen around the CFO side, that's traditionally with us. But now when you look at the operations, this is where that partnership, this is where learning the, the frustrations of the sales group, getting involved in the marketing conversations, really being looked at as a strategic partner inside those functional areas, that's the COO route. So when I look at the next five to 10 years, I think there's going to be continued uh, pressure around the people aspect of it, um, continue teams leveraging technologies, and then also how we begin to uh, partner inside the business to make data-driven decisions. Again, you've got macro and micro factors that are really affecting that evolution, but that's kind of my next five to 10 year. And when you look 15 years down the line, I mean, it's a crystal ball. Uh, when you look at it, I think that's going to be where uh, fp and is going to be really leveraged amongst teams. Um, and technology is going to take away a lot of the blocking and tackling from an accounting perspective. You've got tools and, and technologies that are being solution right now to really help with how we're going to take across this, uh, this new evolution of what FPNA is going to be. And technology is going to be a big role in that. So uh, that's kind of how I see the next five to 10 years evolution of FPNA. Brilliant, Chris. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and your future vision for the FPNA function. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much.